Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing Beetlejuice once again, and specifically that mystery of the demon of Beetlejuice from 2019-2020. Because as you might remember, a few years ago, it had this unusual event when the actual brightness of the star dropped by nearly 60% for no apparent reason, with the demon itself lasting for several months. And there were initial explanations involved some kind of a large emission from the star which probably produced quite a lot of dust that then left the star and very likely blocked some of the star from our perspective. Even if this is exactly what happened here, we still don't understand why this event occurred or why the star had this unusual emission. I mean, the actual effect was quite dramatic. The star on the right is what it looked like at its dimmest, making this one of the biggest mysteries of the last few decades. And so in this video we're going to explore some of the new propositions and actually some of the more eccentric propositions on why exactly the star experienced this unusual emission and why it suddenly released so much matter which ended up blocking the star for at least a few months. Because right now this is still the best explanation. But I guess first it's important to understand that these stars have very different properties from stars like our sun which are a lot more compact and a lot more spherical. Our sun is also going to become a similar red giant in the future, but not as big as Betelgeuse. But when it does, it's going to start acquiring very similar properties, with the star itself expanding several hundred times in size, becoming much cooler, but also becoming a lot more unstable in terms of its actual shape. Even a single convection cell on the surface here is sometimes 20 to 30% the radius of the star itself. The convection cells on the sun are tiny in comparison. And as a result, these stars tend to actually move around a lot more, and it's even difficult to pinpoint exactly where their center is. For example, here is a model kind of showing us that the center of the star jumps around every few weeks. And so these stars definitely vary quite a lot and change their shape all the time. The surface here is kind of difficult to define. But having this object release such a huge amount that then dims it by 60% is a different story. And so one of the earlier suggestions was that maybe Beetlejuice is approaching its sort of end. Maybe it's about to explode and go supernova. And knowing what we know about these stars, or basically knowing that they usually take a few thousand years to go through this particular stage before they go supernova, there's actually a very intriguing way to find out if this idea is correct. It involves looking at some of the ancient records from various civilizations that looked at the star before. So for example, this study that looked at this a few months ago, and specifically focused on Betelgeuse and Antares, discovered that Antares was quite the same for a long time, but Betelgeuse has changed in the last few thousands of years. It seems to have changed in color compared to some of the earlier observations from the Chinese observers which implies that maybe Betelgeuse has actually entered this stage only relatively recently, which also means that it's going to stay in this particular stage for a very long time. In other words, assuming that these observations are correct, it's not going to go supernova for thousands and thousands of years, and it is just going through its early transition stages. Now likewise, if it has only recently entered this relatively active and relatively giant stage, there is another really important implication from all of this and it actually has something to do with what you might see around Betelgeuse. It naturally might have had some planets that formed here early on. Now it's obviously not certain if it ever had planets and there's probably no direct way to find out right now, but assuming that it did have planets, it most likely, as it expanded, ended up consuming some of them relatively recently, within the last few hundreds of years. And intriguingly, a recent paper kind of described this in some detail. It essentially described what happens to various stars, giant stars, when they do swallow certain planets. And in the process they did discover that if the planet is really giant, and if it's really massive, the star itself will start having unusual effects on the surface and potentially even behave in very chaotic ways. Specifically, it can actually affect the star's rotation, it can even change its chemical composition, and it can actually create quite a lot of unbinding energy which ends up releasing huge chunks of atmosphere. So, I mean, kind of like what happened here. So, in other words, there is a bit of an implication that maybe, and it's a big maybe, there was a giant planet that was swallowed by Betelgeuse in the last few hundreds of years, and that planet might be causing some of the disruption we're seeing with the chunk then becoming loose. And so, because the planet was eaten and the planet is now stirring the star from the inside, this vigorous stirring 
resulted in some of the parts of the star then essentially being thrown off and escaping into the outer space. Although for most extreme effects, the planet would have to be really massive as well, basically a brown dwarf. And so in this case, this particular planet, this terrestrial planet, would very likely not be enough. But if Betelgeuse had some kind of a Jupiter-like object, or even something more massive than Jupiter, and more specifically, some kind of a hot Jupiter orbiting around it, that could maybe explain some of these effects. At least that's one of the initial propositions here, one of the initial potential explanations. But then we have another one that's a little bit more extreme, or I guess a little bit more curious, interesting, unusual, I mean, choose the word yourself. It does involve a black hole. So the paper in the description below proposes that it can also be explained if there was something relatively massive and something relatively dense passing close enough to the star to essentially cause what's known as a tidal disruption. Now, we normally talk about tidal disruption events when it comes to very massive black holes, and normally stars being spaghettified and essentially shredded by black holes as they approach a black hole really close, but that's not entirely what we're talking about here. In this case, it could have been a slightly opposite event. There could be a black hole in orbit around Betelgeuse, or possibly some kind of a dense, massive object passing relatively close just this once. And having an object like a neutron star, a black hole, or even a white dwarf in orbit of a red giant is actually very common. So that's definitely not impossible. And because in this case the observations do suggest that whatever happened was on the outside and not inside the star, it kind of does imply that something disrupted the star, or possibly something caused the star to be disrupted, from inside as well. By either doing something on the inside or by doing something on the outside. As a matter of fact, the star itself is just a little bit too big and a little bit too active to suddenly have these changes as a result of changes inside the fusion reaction or inside the core. So the disruption and the dimming really appear to have some kind of an external effect independent of the star's activity. And in this case, if the shape of Betelgeuse's outer atmosphere did change and resulted in what's known as gravity darkening, a phenomenon usually visible around stars that spin really fast where the actual equator appears much darker than the polar regions, one possibility here is that maybe Betelgeuse has gone through something similar. Something caused a part of the equator to move away from the core farther than the rest of the star, which in the process reduced the temperature and thus reduced the brightness. And intriguingly enough, we do know that the temperature here did change. As a matter of fact, the observations about this were completely accidental. There's actually this Japanese satellite known as Himawari 8 that creates some of the most beautiful pictures of the region, allowing us to keep track of everything including hurricanes, including pollution and a lot of other things, such as sudden eruptions of volcanoes, this is the famous eruption of Tonga, and in this case, this particular satellite, because of its ability to observe infrared light, in some of its peripheral vision somewhere right there, was also able to observe Betelgeuse during its dimming period. And the scientists that have accidentally discovered this determined that Betelgeuse changed its temperature by approximately 140 degrees Celsius, in the process also discovering potential signs of dust or some kind of matter covering the star itself, which of course gives more credibility to the scenario right here, and of course confirms that something causes Betelgeuse to release huge amounts of matter all at once. And so in this paper, the scientists propose that any kind of a random visitor, for example a black hole, a white dwarf, or even a neutron star, would actually be able to produce all of these effects if it passed at a certain distance away from the star, causing a tidal disruption, with their models establishing that 60% dimming effect could definitely be created by this particular event. But unfortunately, because there is no other evidence otherwise, and because we haven't really seen any other emissions such as X-rays or really anything else indicating a black hole, a neutron star, or even a white dwarf passing here, at the moment it's more or less just a novel explanation, an interesting and intriguing explanation, but not necessarily the most correct one. But right now, these are the best explanations we have about what might have happened. So possibly a black hole, white dwarf, neutron star passing nearby, or possibly a large, massive planet being swallowed by Betelgeuse a few hundred years ago, as it transformed from one stage to another, and as the planet, still possibly orbiting somewhere within the star, is essentially causing all of these disruptions. Or maybe something else entirely happened and we just don't really know what yet. Chances are though, we're going to be coming back and talking more about this in some of the future videos. These are really intriguing propositions and really intriguing investigations, 
but they just need more evidence. More observations, more discoveries about something coming from Betelgeuse, and not just modeling, proposition, and theories. But until we discover something else, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. All of the links and papers in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.